As an artist and a mom, life is a big ball of craziness. And between changing diapers, managing toddler tantrums, picking up toys and moldy cookies stuffed inside a sock buried deep inside a cabinet with blankets and stuffed animals for the 3,756th time, it's safe to say that my butt is sufficiently kicked on a daily basis. And yet, here I am, behind the easel, nose buried deep inside a canvas, having the audacity to paint with obnoxious colors, drips and scribbles, and making something that takes me deep into my feelings all in a day's work. This little number was originally an old Halloween painting I covered with black paint a few years back, stuffed deep inside my closet and totally forgot existed until a few days ago when I was hunting around for a new canvas to paint on. Now, I'm not too crazy about the dark background, so I decided to splatter and drip using lots of peaches, pinks, and light oranges, and then scribble with yellows, pinks, purples, and creams until I had a background that was somewhat passable. Then decided to undo all my work and paint right on top with a big streak of creamy white, I think. Then I hit it again with more layers of obnoxious, tasteful toddler scribbles and chicken scratch. I literally have no idea what I am doing. And that, my friend, is what we like to call the, the artistic, artistic process. process. I finally lost my mind and decided to crack open my newest obsession, modeling paste, which is this lovely gloopy goop that helps bring lots of delicious texture to the canvas surface and quiets down some of the more louder, obnoxious mistakes I painted in the previous layers. I don't really freak out too much anymore when I find mistakes with my work because I'm working on a background and it's extremely forgiving. Plus, working with acrylics really puts me at ease because I can always bury mistakes with a new layer on top once the previous layer dries. So no worries, Hakuna Matata. Okay, can we just take a minute and look at these cool textures? Once my modeling paste is dried up, it's just, oh, look at that. It just look, it looks like stucco on the side of a building. It just adds some freaking cool depth. Guess what happens next? More scribbles! Yay! I realized that after adding multiple paint layers that I kind of lost a lot of my previous scribbles. So back in they go. Now, after looking at all the scribbles and the colors and all the layers and the textures, I did start to see a face that would work really well here. So after a few quick sketches to compose and place my features, I was finally ready to paint in my lady. I don't know why, but this painting kind of gives me Barbie vibes. Like it looks a little bit like Margot Robbie from Barbie, just kind of having like a dramatic moment. This was really not my intention, but the more I painted it and like the way her hair was, like with this big voluminous poofiness, it just, it kept serving me Margot Robbie. What do you think? Is the, Do you see a particular profile of a, of a well-known person? Who does this look like to you? Comment below, let me know because I see Barbie. I don't know. <laughs> so as I'm painting and adding more features to, I'm just gonna call her Margot Robbie, that's all I see right now, and start to layer in with more drips and with more scribbles, just to add even more dimensionality to this. And I'm loving how I'm combining more colors with these acrylic markers. And by the way, in case you didn't know, acrylic markers are chef's kiss. I think these are really great for the new style that I'm doing here.
The original and prints are now available in my shop, so be sure to go ahead and check it out if you're interested. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!